Good afternoon all and welcome to the live stream from State Champions Week down here in the City Bowls Club in Warnable. Put a cracker of a game, cracker of an event, men's singles final between Nathan Murray and Lee Schreiner. I'm uh, Jimmy Whitehead, the event and competitions manager at Bowls Victoria. Bit of an uh, extinguished guest beside me, we've had to bench some of our regular streaming commentators due to the four and a half hour marathon they've just commentated on in the Maddie Flapper Max Goldsmith mixed pairs game. Oh right, Johnny Roberts, how are you John? I'm very well thanks Jimmy, it's great to be here, it's been a, a great number of days of great bowling and uh, great facility and uh, it's been a really exciting um, environment to be in. Yeah, it's been great, now before we talk about the players and get into the game, you've done a power work this week mate, organising all the offici officials and umpires and the markers to get going. It's, um, it's gone pretty smoothly. It's gone very smoothly and we've been very fortunate to be able to use a lot of our local umpires and markers and we've really appreciated at some stages we've required 20 markers and we've provided maybe half a dozen and the rest have been from locals so we couldn't have done it without them and they've uh, really done a great job so we're very grateful. Yeah good stuff, it just goes to show essential them volunteers are, as, as, as well as the many other volunteers we have operating at this, this event, are, they're essential to it running. Like If we didn't have the 20 markers then we can't run the singles game. Exactly. All the, um, the two umpires per green as well. So um, no, it's been fantastic. It's uh, been a pleasure to be here down at Warrnambool. No, it's great. Look, we appreciate all the hard work you put in, mate. So we've got one of your club members here, Nathan Murray. Um, yep. Give us some insight into Nathan and anything he's going to go here. Yep. Um, He'll definitely be, he'll do very well, he's a great competitor, um, is Nathan. Um, Nathan's been with us for five years now at Bandura RSL. Yep. Um, he uh, actually started bowls when he was 13 years of age. Oh wow. Involved himself through his parents um, and, and bowled at um, City of Melbourne, Flagstaff Gardens. So he stayed there for I think about four years, but in his very first year of bowls he won the Division 7 flag, which he's very proud of. <laughs> yeah. Fair play. And he's, uh, yeah, he's been on an upward trajectory from there, really, hasn't he? He's, um, yeah, he's a Victorian State Pairs winner, Australian Championship Silver Medalist, um, State Triples winner in 2016 as well, and a couple of Premiership medals in his day, so yep. certainly very handy. What's he got to do here to beat Lee, you reckon? Uh, just could be consistent. Um, and, I mean, Lee's a bit of a machine, so I just think he just needs to hang in there. And um, he's very capable. He skips at, in Premier level. Um, has, Got a good record there. Yeah. There's two premiership medals. One was at Mooney Valley, where he was there for an, four or five years. And then, of course, one with Bun. A start by Nathan there. See how Lee responds. Again, for those that have joined us on streams before and for those that might be joining for the first time, we're using rink one here, but it is almost rink one and a half, so it's moved up from the ditch to sort of get, ready and get rid of any of them runs that might be there. Players seem to much prefer playing on the one and a half. We've had some scheduling dramas in the last few days where, as I've mentioned a few times before, we're running extra events in shorter days this time around at State Champions Week. So we've needed all rinks at some stage. And a good effort there again by Nathan. Of course, Lee's first ball's a toucher. Yeah, this, this is already showing how good this game can be, I reckon. Yeah, good home with his second bowl by Lee. Good home. Yeah, great bowl. And of course behind the head there we've got our distinguished marker, Mr Bob Carlson, who's uh, been a member at Sunbury Bowls for about 35 years, never bowled anywhere else. And uh, Bob's been involved in a uh, high level of officiating for a long time, including um, three Commonwealth Games, Melbourne, New Delhi and Broad Beach. Yeah, we roll out the best of them for the big games, like when we rolled out you the other day, John. We uh, ensure these games are marked to perfection. Yeah. There's a great job. Bob also sits on the officiating and laws committee at for Bowls Victoria, and there's a power of work there. I know yeah. I've had many a phone call with him in the two months I've been in this role. He's a man of uh, great knowledge. 
about the laws of the sport. In fact, in 2017, he was the official of the year. Oh, wow. And part of the um, Bowls Australia Awards. Oh, fair play. A great bowl league. This is pretty high standard start to the game. No, no need to warm up for these boys. Of course, got the two practice ends before, but yeah, straight onto it. No messing about. Yep. See what Nathan does with this bowl. He's after it. He's after it. He's fairly happy. He's got a lot of got turns a, again. He's got the right weight. He's just going to. Yeah, rip back. Yeah, that's a great bowl. He's got some supporters here already, you can hear. I see Dean O'Neill, his club mate, in the corner of the back there, watching on. Let's see how Lee responds. He'll come the same way, I think. Yeah, I agree. And he is. Mate. It's not far away. Not far away, but he's Nathan's front ball. Yeah, Lee's got a busy schedule today. He's already played semi-final of the singles where he knocked off Jared Hammond. He yeah, did. He, I marked that game. It was a great game, but he was in charge right from the start, really, and Jared was chasing him most of the game. It's not the sort of person you want to get behind too, Lee, is he, really? really? And, of course, he played down in the mixed pairs yep. in, the last, in the round of 16 with um, Taylor Marin, and they've got through to that, so... After this game, Lee's got another game. Yeah. He's, um, he has an amazing schedule. Of course, already winning the uh, men's pairs event with his mate Brad Marin earlier in the week. Played real well in that final. Coming against Nathan Bush and Paul Newcomb. So we know Lee's famous for his to T tactics. Nathan playing a fairly long end here. He's sort of he's brought the mat up a couple of metres from the tee, but he's put the jack right at the back on yeah. the other tee. Lee definitely prefers long ends. You think Lee's our current world singles champion? Gonna take some beating. Yeah, great. Great ball there. A few other games going on at the moment. We've got the semi finals of the women's singles. You see next door Alison Hall against Gal McKenzie from Gibbsland. Oh, Nathan, sensational. Great, Great ball. ball. She's against Alison Hall from Yarra. That one, it's going to be 15 13 to Alison. Alison's just in front. Has been most of that game. And the other semi final of the women's is a bit further up. See Angela Hackett from oh good effort by Lee. Angela Hackett from Streslecki against Tiff Brody from Sam Belt. That one 15-2 to Tiff. She's out in front by a fair bit there. Well I've just seen Angela put down a very handy bowl there. She must still be one down. And sandwich in between them, we've got a couple of finals, the over 60s men's and women's. So rink four is the game between Murray Malley and Yarra. And Yarra. Two great bowls by Nathan. That's terrific bowling by Nathan there. So in that over 60s men's final, we've got Owen Giddings from Murray Malley and Peter Margaret from Yarra. Peter looks to be leading that one. 19-11. I've got someone's head in the way of the scoreboard, but I'm, I think it's Evan. Oh, Leroy. Leroy. Wow, we. Unbelievable. It's going to be one of them games, John, I reckon. 
It'll be a sensational game. And in the women's over 60s final, we have Geelong against Peninsula KC. I, th I think the uh, men's over 60s final has just been completed. Um, oh, well, yep, okay. So that means uh, Margetts from MCC has won the state over 60s men's title. Congratulations. Got, yeah, got some good representation down here to the uh, MCC, so hats off to them. Sorry, I've called the um, one of the ladies semis. That's actually the over 60s final. That one is uh, the Gal McKenzie Allison Hall game. Oh, oh wow! Magnificent. Caused the ball to roll back, and it's got shot. This is ridiculous, Bowler. Lee must be scratching his head and think, "What do I have to do next?" <laughs> that is ridiculous. See what Lee does there, what do you reckon he's doing, John? So the other semi-final in the women's singles is Jam Richardson from Peninsula Casey and Belinda Coke from Geelong. That one over on rink five. It's pretty far advanced, 2016. What's Lee gonna do here? To Jan from the Peninsula Casey. Good. Just gotta get there a bit. Uh, just a little bit short. Yeah. I can't tell from here. <laughs> He's got shot there. <laughs> They're all too close from the angle we set. I'm even looking at the commentary angle. It's a ridiculous head on the second end of the game. Yeah. So, uh, some early involvement for one of your umpires here, John. Oh. From here, I'd say it'll be, I think, it will be a feeler gauge, I would say. Yeah, talk us through the process here, John. What's so what he needs to do first is you always chop your leaning bowls, which is, you can see him doing the back bowl is leaning. He's ch chocking that bowl. And um, he should try not to touch the jack. So then he should, so he obviously has to, to chop the jack to remove that bowl safely, because that's obviously shot bowl. Yep. So now he's determining who has second shot. So the umpire should use the caliper from the open side. I have some steady hands to do this, I don't think I'd be. Yeah. Calipers. Yeah. Closest point from bowl to jack. It's not a horizontal measure, it's on an angle. Now go to the other side, and he's got cramp. Oh, jeez. <laughs> cramp. The tension has created cramp. This is uh, some effort by the umpire. Yeah. So obviously Nathan's only got one shot. Okay, one shot to Nathan. 
John, I was glad we had you here to talk us through that. It's great. Thanks for joining no us, problem. mate. It's been a pleasure to be here, Jimmy. Yeah. I'll uh, hand over to uh, Brad Marin. No dramas. We're going to bring in a good friend of Lee Schreiner. And, um, Brad, welcome, mate. Current, current. we can say current now, but you won the state pairs with Lee earlier in the week, mate. How's it going? No, really good, mate. Really good. Happy to be here. What a start. Yeah, it's... Um, <laughs> That's ridiculous, that, though. That last head... Uh, it's, Seven bowls inside 18 inches. That's um, <laughs> that's why they're both in the final, I suppose. Yep. What do you reckon? How's uh, Leroy approaching this one? We know he hasn't been feeling particularly great today, has it? No, he wasn't too flush this morning, but um, got out of bed about uh, seven o'clock and didn't look the best. Yeah. Anyhow, anyway, everyone knows that um, Leroy's not a morning person, <laughs> but um, yeah, this morning didn't look flash, but. Um, when he gets on the green, it's just, it's like a, there's a switch that gets flicked um, and it's, you know, game on, so. He's an incredibly well-oiled well machine. Went through with, uh, with your partner, mate, earlier in the mixed pairs. So he's got a busy day of bowls. This is his third of what will be four games. A very busy day. Bit of a Vic Open feel about it, Leroy. <laughs> starting early, finishing late. <laughs> Oh, he's had some pretty relaxed days the last couple of days, and the triples and triples are on, so he's he should be rested enough anyway going into it. Yeah, we we had the pleasure of calling your men's pairs final, mate. You bowled particularly well that that day, so we had a few comments to that. You uh, stuck with the typical leash trainer game plan of ditch to ditch. Yeah, well, obviously we knew, uh, regardless of um, who we played, we had to play well. Um, and uh, Nathan Bush is renowned for backhand dominance. Yeah. Um, not to say he can't play forehand by any means, but um, his backhand is one of the best backhands going around in the game. So uh, we discussed before the game I was going to play backhand round the clock. Yeah. Um, and try and um, sort of beat Nathan to it. Um, unfortunately, that came off. Um, but yeah, just playing my role for the obviously combo. Um, did our bit and. Uh, what looked on the scorecard as a runaway win, I can tell you it was very, it, it was uh, definitely not. That's some great insight there that you just spoke about that play backhand round the clock. It just shows how much, I mean obviously yourself and, and oh, great ball by Nathan. Um, how much you think about the game before and it's not just turn up, try and play your best balls, it's all right, who are the opposition, what are we going to do? What can we what can we do to combat their biggest weapons? Right? That's that's amazing. Do you think he would have done the same with Nathan here? Anything he needs to look out for with Nathan? You think? Or? Um, well, last time last time he played Nathan was at the Vic Open mm. um, a couple of years back, and that was a pretty one-sided affair. But um, Leroy that day was drawing four inside a bloody dinner plate. So. <laughs> but um, Nathan started really really good here, um, and I remember from the pairs final um, this ditch side for Leroy just struggled to get back to the line with his uh, tennis ball bowls. Yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. yeah, I remember him throwing his head up a couple of times early in that Pairs game. He wasn't particularly happy with where his bowls were, or what his bowls were doing even. Um, yeah, so maybe that's something to watch out for, especially coming down this way. I felt he felt it more heading down this way on his forearm. It is, um, it is very crucial, as you've probably witnessed on most mm. uh, games, um, where the jack is yep. as well. Um, so that's that's key, obviously, as well. Think it turns less the sort of shorter the jack is, or um, going the forehand in the direction that they're going now, I would say yes. Yeah, okay. Um, but backhand up towards the bags, um, the the longer the end is, the less it turns. So um, that's why we didn't play ditch to ditch going that way. We sort of. Matt on the tee is normal, um, and then Jack halfway, start of the line up to halfway of the line, yeah. Because um, both our bowls was were just getting stuck out there. Is that something you worked out a few ends in? Yeah, um, but we try and regardless of where the Jack is in the roll up, my I've got I play two at the Jack and then two either side to the tee. Yeah. Sort of just to get a feel of um, you know what it's doing Four to the tee because that's our go-to length and if you know we don't feel comfortable after that well then we won't play it yeah but um also not just play to our strengths but we've got to play to the opposition's um weaknesses but 
as everyone knows when you're here there's yeah. very very minimal weaknesses yeah um, so any any little incentive we can get to help us we need to take full control of um, and we managed um, I think I think every end going this way we outnumbered shots in the head yep um, but going that way is where we predominantly lost the end yeah um, so and how, how are you like I know I've watched various different bowlers be coached by various different people how are you tracking that are you, are you tracking that on a card are you tracking that in your own mind or is it just something you feel as the games go it's just um, something we remember to be fair um, everyone in the bowls world uh, knows that Leroy can tell you what happened three years ago the Vic <laughs> Open final on N5 um, and it you know it rubs off a rubs yeah. off a little bit got to get down this is what we're talking about this hand here hey? doesn't quite probably get as much as he wanted to there. his weight's spot on as as always Nathan's probably just maybe got the one yeah, yeah just the one if it was any more than one he would have played weight at that but um, given the fact it's only one didn't want to risk taking his own shot bowl out, uh, second shot bowl out so they're actually going to have a look at yeah, this yeah right Angles are deceptive from up here. Jim. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, I've spoken about it a few times, mate. It's very hard to, to call a shot from, like, who's shot up here. Like, you, it looks completely different when you're standing over the top of it. It's good in the singles, obviously, with the marker, with the paddle signaling. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah, I'm blown away by that, that insight you've just given there, Brad. I mean, I, I like to think, and I'm sure there's a lot of people listening as well, would be the same as me. I like to think I've got a fair grip of how my game is and, and how I approach games, but yeah, you've just added a few more levels to <laughs> certain things on us. It's it's real good insight. Oh wow. Wonder Leroy. Yeah, there you go. Very deceptive. That's why he drew, hey? Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Singles, first ball's important. You'll be looking to nail this one. Very. Um, having the luxury of being able to watch him in the World Champ of Champs a couple mm. of years ago, um, travelled over there to watch it and in the final, um, against Tony Chung, the first bowl was key. Um, different surface, obviously. Yeah. A very different surface, but still the same. Um, still the same game plan. First on, basically. Yeah. It's kind of his uh, pick to pit. Does he approach all levels of games with the same intensity? Um, so that he's obviously mentioned in, world champ of champs and now he's here state club singles what are you doing same sort of intensity yes um, 100% um, but his game plan changes yeah. varying on his opponent uh, he studies he studies the, his opponents like a uh, punter does every Saturday down the pub right away. it's once again he just remembers things that um, others might not yeah it's incredible Hence, hence why he's been successful for as long as he has in the game. Yeah, there's no point even trying to go through his achievements. We'll chill up the rest of the stream, probably. He's the current uh, world singles champ of champs. Nathan, he's attacked with that one. Just missing down on the wide side. Playing pennant Saturday, mate. Yeah, we're at. Um, I'm glad there's a few uh, MCC players here well. actually because um, I was all set to rock up to MCC ready to play Deer Park, but I would have been a week early. We actually play Whittlesea at Whittlesea, so <laughs> yeah, we're playing Deer Park um, on Saturday. That's just a, a local drive, Whittlesea, just up the road. <laughs> Fair whack from here. You heading back tomorrow, or are you guys heading back? Um, dep depends on how they fare in the mix. Yeah, okay. Um, hopefully they can go all the way and win it, um, and then they can. Um, I've got the kids back at the house, and yep. they can they can celebrate all night. <laughs> yeah, Sperry, will you comment on telling Nathan to get a haircut? He's actually got a bit of a bet with ex uh, Bolswick president Barb Gilbert that she's allowed to cut his hair if he wins this game. What Nathan doesn't know is she's got a pair of clippers, not a pair of scissors. So, yeah, if he's successful, he could be sporting a very different look tomorrow morning. He definitely came here fired up, Nathan. He he was gunning for the for the for winning it overall. He's done done the easy part by getting to the final essentially, and now he's playing the hard part, playing against Lee in this. 
had a marathon game last night against Ethan Higgins. We were still here at 10.30 with that game going. That was a very, very long game. I just want to touch on the facility here. What a, what a fantastic facility. Um, I know from a bowler's perspective, we're very thankful that Bowls Vic have um, been able to get this event going. Um, and the, the support from the bowling club here in uh, Warrnambool has been fantastic. Yeah. Um, staff's been brilliant. Uh, all the volunteers helping out with lunches, etc. Been fantastic. Yeah, it's been, it's been really good to to have it here. Obviously, we facilities are second to none. But yeah, you mentioned the volunteers. Been working closely with Brian, the bowls coordinator, who we had on the stream earlier. He's been amazing to deal with. He's got the volunteers. They're again a whale well machine down here. They're ready to host these big events, and they they do it really well. Players have been great. Also, I think I've said it a few times. We've Everyone's aware of the pack schedule we've had and we're playing in shorter days. We've got the addition of the over 60s under 18, so we've asked for a fair bit of flexibility from players and it's yeah, everyone's been great and accommodating and we've got through it all well, we've got one more day to do, so I think I mentioned on the stream yesterday, uh, when JT and Ant Flapper were on yep. um, about possibility of seven thirty in the morning until yeah. Eleven thirty at night, if need be. Um, you got the facilities here to do it. Yeah. Um, you got the space and whatnot, so it could be something for the future that um, I'm sure that uh, Bowls Vic will look at. Yeah. Look, we're, we're we're growing our facilities in the game. That's for sure. There's a there's a ton of clubs getting roofs now. We have got another double roof coming up at Narry Warren. Roofs coming up at Berwick. Karingle have just opened theirs. Packenham have just opened theirs. So. Um, we're definitely going to have an exciting future in terms of how we can host events. Ooh, close one, Nathan. It just went through the hole then. Two, maybe three down. Can't really see on the angle here. Yeah. But yeah, it was definitely a big reason the event came here with the 16 rinks under cover. It just enabled us to have some play. I mean, if we'd have copped any rain without roofs with the schedule we had, it would have been playing a <laughs> different, different dread to think what time of night we'd have been playing. And what's your um, what's your schedule looking like uh, tomorrow? There's n is there any games tomorrow night? Um, I think the Mex Pairs finals early from from memory. We've got a couple of under 18 events to run through tomorrow, but I think 6 p.m. might be the latest, and it might be the boys singles final. Oh, sorry, the girls singles final okay. from memory. You head head home tomorrow night or Saturday morning? Nah, Saturday morning I'll go. I'll drive straight to straight to Pennant from here. Um, tend not to, to drive after a long day and I don't like to drive for the night um, from a day's RBM yeah been... I think we're well we, we're actually unsure yet depending on how deep they go yeah, in the yeah. mixed pairs um, I know well Leroy first of all won't want to travel three and a half hours if he's having to play a couple of games in the morning and yeah successful at them so yeah good start by Lee again Lee leading 3-2, 25 up in this one. Give us your prediction, Jimmy. Oh, mate, people keep asking me this. I'm the biggest fence sitter it's, it's going. Um, I think Lee, I think Lee, just because of his the determination I can see on his face and how he started. But, I, I yeah, I wouldn't walk off this table surprised if, if Nathan got over the top of him either. I think he has the capabilities to beat him, that's for sure. But he's going to have to play up pretty perfect game and a pretty perfect game plan to get it done. Well, I do know um, Leroy came here wanting three golds and he said anything uh, below that in his eyes is a failure so that's how determined he is. Well, well he's a third of the way there mate. Yeah he's not enjoying that hand. Just threw his hands up a bit then. Also a bit of gamesmanship in that. I think he might be doing that to psych himself up in some way, I don't know. He's, some people need to feel a bit of frustration. Well, it's, he's inside 18 inches and he's throwing his hands up, so what other people would be... Uh, <laughs> yeah. What other people would think are brilliant bowls he's not happy with, so... He commented his game against Nathan yesterday was one of the best games of singles he played in a while. He said that was a... Well, I mean, they were on the other green, so I didn't have a bird's eye view of it, but he, he said it was a ripper. Did you Were you here watching that one? Or yeah, what? I actually live-streamed it oh, fair um, on, a, on a bowls group back in Bendigo. Um, and it was. It was nip and tuck um, all the way through. They were about nine all apiece, and then Leroy... 
Um, <laughs> I'm not sure what happened. He flicked a switch or yeah, whatnot, right. but um, just started putting four on a dinner plate every yeah. end. Nathan go with him or? He did. Yeah. Um, Nathan, um, when it's about eight all, uh, Nathan had a drive and he missed. Um, Leroy scored three. Sort of put a bit yeah. of a dent in the uh, margin. Um, and it was just, uh, Leroy I think got out to an 18-8 lead. And then um, Nathan come back to 18-13. Yeah. And then Leroy stepped it up once again, so. Actually, so he would have a, t I, I, I know um, he won the semi-final against Jared. I know Jared had a, an exceptional comeback against Thor on the ring next to us. It's about 15-1 down, I think, or something. It was pretty close to that one stage. Um, and even Lee commented to me when he was handing the cards in after the game that that game, he, from his eyes as he was playing, was, again, an exceptional um, game. A lot of balls in the head. I, yeah. I, I thought... I thought Jared would give him a real red hot crack today, but Lee's obviously just finding other levels to other bowlers at the moment, huh? Hey? Yeah, no, that um, that game between Jared and uh, Thor was incredible. Yeah. It was unbelievable. I think I, I managed to get a fair few wins on the live stream because of how close they yeah, were. Yeah, right. Um, no, both of them fellas, uh, regardless, obviously they'll be disappointed with the result. Not. Uh, not winning, but um, oh, Nathan, great ball, good trail. They were. That was an incredible game, and they both handled themselves well uh, in the event. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Thor came up, up against a couple of real surging players this week. He, he got beat by Jared, who obviously came from nowhere, from behind, and and Brad Lancaster in the Champion of Champ singles. He he's won some admirers this week. He played fantastically well. And Reese Jeffs, who won the men's champ of champs, he kind of had a look about him yesterday that's pretty similar to what Lee's got in his eyes right now. Like, I'm going to win this game. Yeah, no, he's, he's focused. Um, very focused. So he just needs to uh, keep doing what he's been doing all week, I suppose. But yep. um, once again, uh, it's all right for him to do that, but it uh, comes down to he's an opponent. Um, and Nathan started this game on fire as he's been all week. Yeah. Uh, watching him. Probably wants this one to run a bit, I reckon. Yeah, it just looks like he's lacking a yard. Very, very easy to do. Yeah. Very easy to do on this. See what Lee can respond with. This is the sort of surface uh, where if you where if you're struggling, if you are struggling with your weight, it's good to, you know, have the target zone of a meter behind. Try and get to that. Uh, if you any any shorter than that, you're going to be on the money. Um, and even if you do get that meter behind, you're going to have a very good um, position. Yeah, it's good insight there. So it's always positive weight, yeah, rather than that fine draw weight that you're trying all the time. Kevin give some updates from the, the other rings. Next door we got um, Alison Hall from from MCC, mate. She's um, in the over 60s women's final. She looks to be leading 18-15 against Gail McKenzie from Gibbsland. Um, over in the women's semi-final, we have Belinda Coke from Geelong against Jam Richardson from Peninsula Casey. That score looks to be 22-18 the way of Jam Richardson it's providing they've put the scores on the way they should have um, and then on the rink next door, or two rinks over sorry um, we've got Tiff Brody from Sambal against Angela Hackett from Streslecki that looks to be 19-9 the way of Tiff now so Angela fighting back she's probably outscored Tiff since we last gave the updates just to touch on um, 
MCC in the over 60s event this week. Yeah. Um, taking out the over 60 men's pairs, um, and Peter Margaret's just won the over 60s men's singles. Um, so to win one of them is incredible just for a member of a club, but um, two of them is uh, unreal and. Well, ho hopefully all going well. It's going to be three wins for um, MCC in the over 60s field, so that's um, an incredible result. Three players from the same, uh, four players, sorry, from the mm. same club. Um, that's really pleasing to see. Obviously, they're playing well and in form. Yeah, there's been some good representation from MCC down here this week. Tris Dolan as well, Alison Hall in a couple of events. Um, yeah, I'd probably say they'd be one of the most well-represented clubs down here. Actually, I've seen their shirt more than I've seen others. So. Well, got some support behind Nathan. And Bob Carlson is the marker. Important to have a good marker in games like this, eh? Very, very important. How do you play singles? Just a lot of questions, or you sort of get a read yourself? Um, naturally, pretty aggressive. Yeah. Well, oh, he's got to get down. Ooh. Yeah, no, I'm naturally pretty aggressive um, in singles, and I like to like to get down most ends after my third and have a look for myself. Yep. One to Nathan. Five three, his way at the moment. Every time I see Nathan, it's like he's just growing a few more inches as well. He's <laughs> just tall getting fellow, taller yeah. and taller. He's only playing sort of two metres and, and a bit off it being ditched the ditch, so he's, he lock, he's locking his long, lens, long ends too. Yeah, reasonable start. Let's see what Lee's got here. Looks a bit narrow to me. Yeah. Have you been down to Warnable before this week, Jimmy? I came down. Uh, just before Christmas, just have a meeting with the guys, just do some events, just get some uh, event planning happening. Um, yeah. And was, yeah, I was just blown away by the facility and um, their eagerness to, to run a successful event. Yeah, I, I, I've brought my roles down over a roll here and got nowhere near the green this week, so um, relying on what everyone else is telling me about how the green's going. I'll always time, mate, before you head home. Sure, we could come out for half an hour Saturday morning. Yeah. I've got the missus heading down today though, so <laughs> I think I've promised a breakfast early Saturday morning, so I have to see how that one goes. You beauty. <laughs> no, nah, we brought the kids down for the week too. Yeah. Um, it's been great, taking them to the beach, the park. Yeah, awesome. Um, Heaps to do down here. Yeah, they've had a ball. Great ball, Wally. Just found that line he wanted known. Getting the kids into bowling yet, mate? Uh, Oliver, the, the middle child, um, should see some videos of him, it's incredible. Um, got his own set, the old carpet bowls from Henselite. Yeah. Hear him banging up and down the hallway. <laughs> but hey. no, he's, um, he knows when to clap the good ones and whatnot. <laughs> so he's got that down pat, no <laughs> doubt he'll be call. out on the green very shortly. Yeah, I've, got, I've got an eight year old who I brought him a set of bowls about a year ago. Um, haven't haven't pushed him in any way and sort of haven't given him any coach and I've just let him naturally sort of try and come into the game and without any sort of coaching or any any sort of tips and hints from me his delivery just because he watches a fair bit of bowls coming down to watch me and stuff he just seems to have it instantly you're sure it's watching you <laughs> oh yes yeah, exactly <laughs> probably others mate yeah 
No, they do. They do pick it up. Um, they do pick it up very early. Ooh, that might have just sprung a bit further than Lee wanted. Yeah, kids are incredible how um, how quick they pick things up, um, which is good, I suppose. Um, watching bowls most weeks. Yeah. Um, we watch bowls on TV all the time. Yeah. Um, always watching bowls, so. It's such a great sport for kids to grow up in as well. I mean, I grew up around bowls clubs since the age of sort of six or seven in England. And yeah, I'm still great friends with all them people I grew up with. Only ever played for the one club in England. And I just learned so much from outside of bowls, just life lessons as well. Just um, you find the best characters in bowls clubs. It's why we're, why we're such a great sport. Once you're in it, you don't get out of it sort of thing. So, Talking about uh, England... Uh, mate, I'll just check the cricket score. They're playing a test match against oh, Sri Lanka. Yes. <laughs> and they had Sri Lanka two for 18. Oh, here we go. Oh, after, I thought I was going to cop them. eight overs. So that was the last time I checked the score. 61 for three, no? 61 for three. Good start. I know Broad picked up a couple of wickets early on. Oh, good. Yeah, I uh, laid into the Aussies in the stream the other day in the cricket, so I'm, uh, <laughs> I was hoping we weren't on the receiving end of a few wickets going down there, but that's good. <laughs> I know the Aussies have um, made, been forced into making one change for the test starting tomorrow. Yeah. Willie Pekowski hasn't, hasn't pulled up well. Oh, that's a shame. So um, Marcus Harris is back in. He looked pretty good, he did, didn't he? Very good. Just he played. Something the Australians have lacked for a very, very long time, and that is a, a young yeah. uh, opener. Yeah. We always go back to the blokes of Kawaja and Marsh, yeah. etc. Just got to stick with them. What's Lee going to do here, mate? Oh, I think one of his own. I think if, given the fact he's got nothing past the jack, he'll just be trying to turn one of his front ones over, lay it down. I just heard the marker say it's a measure at the minute, so... Yeah, right. Uh, if he lays any of them down, he's shot, so... Angles look... Oh, no, he is playing a bit. He's reaching. Ooh, oh, that from here that looks yeah. like that's made shot, but drawn a clap from Nathan. Yeah, Nathan's pointed his finger at Lee, giving the one. That's one thing that's been evident this week, um, probably on the live stream as well. The camaraderie between uh, the participants has yeah. been brilliant. Um, yeah. I know last night uh, Bushy and Leroy high five and saying well done to each other. Yeah, um, and it's just good to. Obviously, you're, you're winning, but also you're admiring the uh, good shots that are being played. Yeah, we streamed Kyla Krasanik against Jess Wallace yesterday in the Women's um, Champa Champ Finals, and yeah, that, that you can just tell they're good mates and the respect they have for one another and the respect they have for each other as competitors. And yeah, every game's been the same. As there's been no, no negative around that at all. Everyone's sort of here to compete, recognises everyone else is here to compete, and there's, there's just a lot of respect. How often does he do that, Brad? Not very. Rolling in the pit. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's another thing we've picked up. Normally on an indoor carpet, they're heavier jacks. These are normal kitties oh, that right. are used. So um, that's a common thing that on I know Shep Park, um, etc. They use heavier kitties, so you don't yeah. have to give them as much. But these ones are uh, of normal size and whatnot. Normal weight kitties. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah, most indoors I've played on are the heavier. Looks like we have a result over on ring two in the over 60s women's singles. So Alison Hall who's got up there, yeah? Looks like it. Yeah, um, Alison Hall, MCC. Looks to be 21-15. Um, so that's, once again, an incredible effort from MCC as a club. Yeah, um, to win three over 60s state events. It's um, amazing. It's been incredible. A few beers had down there tomorrow night, I'd say. Uh, definitely. Nathan looks to eat in to finish a bit here. Probably. Probably a shot as a straighter bowl, hard to tell. So 
Pictures happening for the MCC guys over there, mate. Might have to Photoshop Pete's hair over there to make it look a bit darker. <laughs> Bradley Campbell tuning in. Good to see Bradley. Former Eastern Park young fella, now up in uh, beautiful Moama. Yeah, it's another ripper venue we've got. He's almost the boss of that venue, he tells me. <laughs> almost runs the place. You catch any of the uh, under-18 boys final last night? I did, actually. The... Um, the embrace when the game was over was probably the best embrace I've ever seen after a game of bowls. Um, both boys were teary, um, parents were teary, yeah. spectators were teary. It was <laughs> it, it, just the feeling that I can only imagine them boys were feeling. Um, obviously it's disappointed that one of them had to lose, um, but I think you can walk away head held high, both the winners, just yeah. for putting on a final that was absolutely brilliant like that. Yeah, we got young Kobe on the stream for a couple of questions, and he was he was shaking. He <laughs> was uh, there's a bit of nerves and a bit of just what the hell's just happened. I think uh, he handled himself very well, very composed. Yeah, he's. Um, I don't want to rub it into Tyson, but I've just seen him go down in the mixed pairs to his to Kobe again. <laughs> oh, two nil up, Kobe this week. <laughs> Uh, wind up in a few minutes, mate. Got to get back to the room and to the kids. cook some food for the family before uh, Tay comes back and plays mixed pairs. Yeah, no dramas, mate. It's all good. It's been great having you. Look, you've provided some great insight, not only into um, to your own game, but Lee's game and, and the way that you guys approach. And I think everyone out there will be taking some notes down from there. No, I certainly will be. Gonna be playing yard up on the forehand here, I'd say. If not, a, if not quicker, split the bowls. Well, that's definitely more than a yard. That's maybe a backyard. He's got the split, I think. Oh, put his hands on his head. Hit what he wanted. Just didn't get enough of the second bowl to uh, move it enough. But once again, just in the area. Yeah, one to Nathan, he's got a ball to come, draw him for a second shot. You've got to take these free hits in singles, hey? Yeah, definitely, um, especially against quality opposition, any time you can uh, have a free kick, basically, um, you have to make the most of it which I'm sure just looks to be just under the weight. Yeah, he'll be kicking himself there. He won't be happy. Yeah, yeah, seeing his so. reaction, he wasn't happy with that. Looks to be one to uh, Nathan again. Got to take all them opportunities at, at this level of game. Next ball's important, I feel, in singles. If you, you have a bad one, you always want your next one to sort of improve or being in Iran, so he'll be real focused on this one, I'd say. Definitely, definitely. Get up to much over Christmas, mate? Uh, yeah, it's caught in New South Wales. <laughs> yeah, we had a border dash back down, and um, so I missed the quarantine. Oh, if I had to quarantine, I wouldn't have been here, so we, yeah, um, right. we had the little eight year old in the car and um, had a bit of a 28 hours we were in the car for at one stage with the drive back, drive up, drive back down on the same day. We went from Tartha up to 
Jarvis Bay and then had to come back down to the border the same day and oh, yeah. stuck in the border for six hours and drive home. That's incredible. I know. So it was... Uh, a lot of kilometres. Yeah. So it was... Um, yeah, I didn't get no bowls in. I've got to be honest. I took my bowls up to have some games on the on New South Wales coast, but didn't get anywhere in the end, so... You fit much bowls in or did you take a bit of downtime in preparation for this? No, actually... Um I actually hadn't put down too many bowls, trying, obviously, young young kids. Mm. Lots oh. happening over uh, Christmas with the kids and whatnot, so I uh, didn't really put too many bowls down. I think Joshy's making his way back shortly, caught up with a few uh, people. <laughs> Anyway, thanks for having me. I'll jump off. Mate, uh, appreciate it. Go watch a little bit of this and then uh, head home to cook. I'm good, mate. Good bring on you, Jimmy. Bring some food back, mate. I think I've had dinner twice this week, so. <laughs> Have a good one, mate. Bringing in my good pal and colleague, Josh Thornton now. Josh, how are you, mate? Good, Jimmy. How are things going? Oh, have you caught the start of this? I have been watching it uh, from the side, and it's been a cracking start. I, remember, I think it was maybe second hand or fourth hand. I can't remember who Andrew was, but it was back towards where the bags are. I wasn't sure there was any bowls outside of four inches <laughs> there at one stage. <laughs> no, the this, ends, this ends up bad either. Yeah, I think the highlight of that end was the, uh, was the umpire getting cramped as he was getting the feeler gauges out. Did you see that? No, I didn't see that one. <laughs> yeah. I tell you what, Brad's just been on good mate of Lee's, and he's yeah. provided some sensational insight into how how Lee approaches the game yeah. in terms of his game plan. He spoke of the state pairs game they played the other night, where they identified that Nathan Bush was very dominant on his on his backhand. Yeah. So that meant Brad led all day on uh, backhand round the clock to try and get in the way yeah. and, and sort of draw in force, on that. Force hand. pushy on his forehand. So he said Lee studies opponents like almost a, a book he would form and um, reckons he's done the same for Nathan. Nathan's matching bowl for bowl so far, you know. Um, Mate, he's got the ability, that's for sure. He's just got to put it all together, I think. I was talking to someone just off air and I uh, was just sort of talking about, you know, obviously Lee's accomplishments are what they are, you know. As I said, we've said it before, you take all night just listing them, you know, when you're, when you're talking about them. But... Yeah, um, but Nathan, particularly in the last three or four years, has been sensational. He's obviously become a regular in the state side. Um, you know, I remember watching him play against uh, Barry Lester in the Richmond Union singles final. Oh, you know, yeah, when and, he won it. Um, with Barry, was probably the red hot favourite, you know, and yeah. Nathan came out and played exceptionally well. And, um, you know, I said all the other things he's done in the last couple of years, he's been, been an exceptional bowler. Give an early tip. Who you tipping now? Oh, I might have to do you, Jimmy, and see the defence <laughs> at this stage. I, look, give me three or four more ends, and I'll make a prediction. Okay, oh, based on watching about a bit more. He's close here. He's just got to climb in this bowl. I think very close. Uh, plays it exceptionally well. He we actually couldn't play that any better. Because any more on the on the high side of it, he's actually pushing, it. pushing the shot bowl up with the jacket. Nathan will play weight on the back end here, you reckon, or is he? I think quick toilet break, he's yeah. away, and he's probably going to come back and go, wow, what did he do? <laughs> Good so, you've never played at the MCG, won Wimbledon, or found yourself on a poster on a kid's bedroom wall. All the skills you've honed over a sporting lifetime will make you a legend on the green. And that green is just up the road. So we got Nathan back from, uh, I think, a toilet break, and he went out a quick look at the head. So interesting to see what he's done. He's lining up with weight, I think. Yeah. Here we go. See if we can make contact with these three here. Great bowl, great bowl. I think that's killed. It has killed. 
Hold for a second, the little feather off his own at the front might have caused some damage, but... Might have just seen the advert for Local Legends Wanted there, which is a campaign to bring new people into our sport from Bowls Australia. That marketing material is available for all clubs to use. Contact your local RBM who can send you over the details and the marketing collateral for that. So posters, uh, social media, tiles, a uh, clip of the video that we just shown there so you can use that to promote their footballs at your club. It's a key way to get people into the sport, bear footballs, hey Josh? Oh, it's a fantastic way. We've got a number of different programs out there that we can do, whether it's state-based or national-based, you know, and, um, you know, I said we've got regional bowls managers, participation coordinators, you know, we've got them all. Uh, they're ready to help clubs out. What's next for you after this, mate? What what have you got on in the participation side of things? I know you've got the school series coming up pretty yeah, soon. Yeah, probably the, that's probably one of my major agendas for the next month or so, I guess, is the School Sport Victoria uh, State Primary Competition. It kicks off well, a few of these competitions start off late Feb, you know, so um, it's uh, it's going to be a hectic month or so, just making sure we've got, no, one, we've got the schools uh, entering and, and playing in it, and then obviously liaising with clubs to help them run that, you know, so. Uh. And how do the clubs get involved in that in the future? Well, look, because uh, it's a school-based competition, um, you know, the schools enter, register online via our website, um, and what I try and identify is a club that's willing to, to um, host the day, and I guess it's a good conduit then to potentially then get the school linked with the club, going for, or multiple schools linked with the club, so that they might actually do something outside that actual program as well too, you know. Those programs, you know, so, and that's that's as Bowls Australia and or Bowls Victoria, you know, so. Yeah, it's great. Goodbye, Wale. Um, I know some clubs run six really successful roll-up programs. I remember doing a sporting school program um, in my role as an RBM before, and it was pretty close to the Flemington, Kensington Bowls Club, and... All the kids there said, yeah, Wednesday nights we're going to have the bowls club, it's great. And then mum and dad come pick us up after, we have a barbecue before we go home. And it's just a great way of engaging your local community and getting younger people around the sport and, and into your club. And yeah, it's um, yeah. something all clubs should should think about. Oh, absolutely. Sure. Now, I mean, and I mentioned in the earlier broadcast when we are doing the, the mixed pairs game, it's not just juniors, I mean, they're, they're, they're a priority, but there are a number of different priorities for our sport, you know, so we've got different demographics and different ages we can target, and clubs are just going to go out there and help look for them, you know, so. so some cracking bowls already this end. Yeah, see Nathan what they can do here. He's trying to, reply. trying to sit Nathan's at the back, I reckon, and he nails it. Yes. Nathan might be a chance to switch to forehand now. Bobby Carlson answering the questions there. We're giving him a bit of a wrap on this stream. He's a highly accomplished marker. Unofficial. Nathan, very close here. Nathan watching from the side of the rink here. Just his weight slightly missed there, but well, in fact, he might have been aiming to split them three balls on. Yeah, there's a chance that that's the case. Um, the only thing it has done is if, if Nathan wants to attack, um, his bowl might lock into Lee's bolt, you know, um, if he happens to be a bit narrow. So, we'll just see what shot he plays. He wasn't far off with this last, that's for sure. 
We've got the superstar Kobe Chromie kicking off on the rink next to us, mate. He's just beating his brother for a second time in two days. He's going off in the mixed pairs finals for the under 18s. He's playing with Alana Flapper and yeah. playing against Grant McLaren Sophie. and Sophie Kersman. Mm -hmm. So this should be another cracking final for the juniors. Yep. They've been well represented down here and I think we've spoken many times about their enthusiasm for the game. It's it's infectious. Yep, absolutely. Got Tiff Brody against Angela Hackett in one of the women's semi-finals. Tiff, 2015 up there, that was about 15-2 at one stage. So Angela's fighting hard, she's holding two at the moment as well. Tiff's last ball's coming down, she doesn't log it. So it's a pickup of two by Angela, 2017, that's game on that. Yeah, oh Lee, Lee Roy. Well, I thought the start that Tiff had two. Oh yeah, great ball by Lee. What he does, time after time after time. Two to leak, evens it all up. I watched the end of the uh, under 18 mixed pair semi final between Kobe and Tyson. and. Tyson was un, uh, up to playing the last end and little brother's come down and sport the day and played two absolute clinkers to add to his leads one and won the game. As a 13 year old he plays balls way beyond his maturity. That's for sure. Sinley rolled the jack in the pit earlier. Brad mentioned that they're not using heavy jacks here. Actually, no, they're not. I just, actually, I probably should have picked up on it the amount of times I rolled the jack this week. <laughs> That's probably why you're out, mate. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you got knocked off. I didn't even think about that, Jimmy. It's too busy because you're trying to get them close. <laughs> Great starter here by Nathan. Trying to find out who won the um, first women's semi-final, women's single semi-final. Just waiting for some info to come my way and I will let you know. Can't tell on the scoreboard because it says 23-22 and, and they're off the green. It appears they've played 30 Enzo, Jimmy, so a long cracking game. Yeah. A few marathon games, Ethan Higgins and Nathan Murray last night. I thought we were still going to be playing this morning, the way that one was going. Right, you've had a few more ends, mate, and it's six all. Who are you going for? I'm going to back Lee. Yep. I think it'll go all, all the way, though. Yeah, I, I think it's going to be close. I think it, it could go either way, but I'll, I said I'll go. I'll put my neck on the line and go with the prediction. Lee playing with some aggression. Close. Yeah. Probably Ooh. made one. Call that s second prize. He probably wanted both bowls, no jack. But yeah, he's, he's yeah, yeah. He'll, he'll take that for now. In the first women's singles semi-final, Belinda Coke 
defeated Ran, uh, Jan Richardson 25-22. So Belinda makes the women's singles final. The other one's between Tiff Brody and Angela Hackett, which is currently 2019 to Tiff Brody. I think... Tiff's just picked up one, so 21 19 to Tiff now. trying to draw in here. Still ample room for both players here. Not anymore. Not anymore. Lee currently holding two. So Nathan's got his last ball here. He's coming on the backhand. Looks pacey, he's probably with that he needs to hope he gets a jack. Oh, did. He's not happy with himself there. Doug, I think you're uh Mistaken Jimmy's accent, is it? Is that what it is, yeah, you reckon? Yeah, I'm definitely not calling it a ball, mate. I can guarantee you that. I don't think I've ever said the word ball yet either. Gonna be heavy with that one. It's probably the loosest opening bowl I've seen for a little while now. They've been pretty red hot so far. Yeah, good reply by Nathan. Yeah, Paul, it's Facebook who picks up the subtitles, not, not us. It's nothing to do with our stream, so turn them off would be my suggestion. Reply by Lee. Holding one note. the crowd's going to build up in the next 15-20 minutes too, Jimmy, you know, um, seen a completion of a few games, um, are we going to get around this men's singles final? Hello Nathan, still want to leave. Grab, probably, grab probably, a bit of dinner, sit down, watch. They probably all did what you did mate, and go and have a nap out the back after that four and a half hour Matty Flapper, Max Goldsmith and Spurs game. That was a long game, it was, mate, it was very enjoyable to watch. Uh, Tiff's game hasn't 21-19 still. Um, Angela's got last bowl in that next end after the one I and gave the update on. shot over there too. Yeah, yeah. yeah, Jack's in the middle of a heap of bowls, so he can't... It's a very small head, so he can't really see from... She's a few rings down. We'll keep you updated, though, for sure. Nathan just arriving here on this line. He's got chances with his own or just underneath it under the jack. It's close, mate. Oh, great ball. Mm. Top ball, that. I mentioned, I mentioned this before. I keep going to clap every time. 
The balls are bowling, won't be good on the stream. You'd be doing it all night with these two playing. Yeah, sore hands. Lee's coming down for a look at the head. I reckon we're going to see a chance of aggression here. Positive shot on Lee's backhand, I reckon. I reckon he's got chances off, he, off either Nathan's bowls and... I mean, preferably, I reckon if you get Jack in the pit, it would be the shot he'd be playing for. Or play forehand weight. Either way, I think it's aggression. Yeah, I'd agree, mate. Yeah, it's... It's giving it a fair watch. Close. Something's going to happen. That. I don't know. Gets the trail. Puts it in the pit. Holds. Three, I reckon. Yeah, definitely two. You see uh, the marker, Bob. So Jack's in the pit. Sort of. Sort of in between where two of Lee's bowls are closer to the ditch. Actually, uh, Mark and Bobby Carlson's got four paddles up. Well, we. Bit of room to cut down a, at least a couple of shots for Nathan here, though. He bowls it exceptionally well. He could. Probably cut out three and get shot. Tiff Brody score. She picked up two, so now 23 19 to Tiff against Angela Hackett. Oh, Nathan. He's not just got back in bounds. He's not happy with himself there. He looks, looks to the sky. How many it is? There's definitely three. And we're gonna umpire's gonna come along and measure this. Uh, on that Angela Hackey and Tiff Brody match, it is 1923, like Jimmy said. And uh, Tiff is holding one at this stage. We'll be also be able to provide you some updates and some other mixed pairs matches that are going to start very shortly, the quarterfinal stage, which will be starting out on the rest of the screen. Got the string measures out here, mate. Yeah, measure for fourth. Yeah, well. Bob giving the mark for uh, oh, sorry the umpire help here. Yeah. Couldn't have a better man do it, could you? Bobby Castle, one of our longest serving ITOs, I guess. Three. Three to Lee. Bit of a lead opening up now for Lee. Takes him eleven six in front. Bob and Nathan just having a giggle. Bob was actually about to put three of Nathan's paddles up. Mm -hmm. I think Nathan would have wanted that. <laughs> yep. He snapped his hand off. Tiff scoring one there, I think. 23-19 to Tiff now. 24-19, wouldn't it? Was it 23 before? 24? No, 22. Okay. 
We'll confirm that shortly. different length for Lee. I think you know he's preferable ditch to ditch length in the last couple of There may be another long match uh, about to occur in the mixed pairs. We just seen Matty Flapper play a marathon and he's playing a marathon man and Ethan Higgins himself. Yeah, I said earlier we didn't think we were going to get that game finished and he played Nathan. But What time is it, Jimmy? Yeah, okay. We might be here for a bit. <laughs> Don't forget Lee's got to play another game tonight in the mixed pairs. We might see what time this one finishes up. <laughs> got the women's singles final coming after this as well. You know, I knew that. No, women's singles should be good. Regardless who wins this match over here. Great ball there by Lee. His weight over the last three or four ends has been uh, sensational. And that's where he's gained a bit of the ascendancy. Lee holding one at the moment, Bob just signalling that. He's coming in on the forehand, he's trying to just get to his own. That's another good ball. Yeah, ripper by Lee. Tiff has got the job done against Ange. Tiff Brody through to the women's singles final. Well done to her, she'll play against Belinda Coke in that one. Yeah, should be a good final. I think I was talking to Matty Atobre, who's the education and training manager, and he actually marked Belinda Coke's game yesterday. He said she was well down and came back fighting hard, so she's got a never say die attitude, so that should be a ripper of a game. Yeah, Lee Tronic just wants to hang around now. Uh, nearly another counter. I reckon it be. is, mate. I reckon it is from our angle, but yep. Bobby Carlson signaling three. Lee's holding three. I tell you what, this is a big ball, my Nathan. Yeah, it's the same there before, Jimmy. Um, his last three four ends have been good for Lee. His, his weight control has been good. His shot selection has been good. Execution has been good. And... Um, it's a big bowler for now because he's lost the last three ends and he needs to get some momentum back. Well, 
we're going to see some aggression here from Nathan, I reckon. This is unfortunately, so it's possibly, probably another three. Just wait for Bob to confirm. Yeah, Nathan's confirmed three. 14 6 to lead, a bit of a bit of a lead. It's picked up 2 2 3 3 in the last four rounds of 10 shots. It's a huge, huge jump ahead. Yes. Um, it's definitely not over. We'll see some fight from Nathan. I can see it. Kobe Chromie out to an early lead over Grant McLaren there, 2 0. And the under 18 mixed pairs final. Amazing delivery. Andy start by Lee, very good position ball. <laughs> For the viewers at home, as I said, we've got some mixed pairs matches about to start, quarter final stage. Um, we have uh, Central Goulburn Murray, represented by a shepherding team, playing uh, Yarra in one mixed pairs quarter final. On the next rink we have the Northern Gateway team playing the Sandbelt team. I haven't got that one wrong all day today, Jimmy. <laughs> I bet you were dreaming about Sandbelt last night, mate. Even someone pointed out in the earlier broadcast they were under, they actually tried to hoax me into saying it again. <laughs> Not this time, Jimmy. You've and in the last quarter final currently being played we have the Ocean Grove team of that we saw it on the last live stream match playing, that's, and that's from the Geelong region. I might tag in our uh, club education and training manager, Mario Tobra, here. Mario, let you jump in, mate. Welcome, Matty. Oh, thanks, Josh. I assume you've been watching this game from the sidelines like I was before I entered the commentary. <laughs> it's it's oh, been a cracking start. Um, it has. It's probably been the last four rounds where we've seen a real change in the match with Lee gaining some real momentum. I was having a bit of a chat to um, JR before and I was wondering... Home, who's JR? For those at home, who's JR? Just so the viewer... Ian uh, Ewing. Yep, yep. Yeah, our uh, state coach. Yes. Um, and I was wondering why uh, Nathan's playing the same distance that uh, Lee's likes. And what was uh, JR's response to that one? <laughs> I'm trying to get it out. I, I think if you're gonna, you know that Lee, when he gets the mat, he's going to play that distance. Yeah. And if you're going to beat him, you've got to beat him at that distance. Which yeah. makes it for a long game, doesn't it? Does. You could make a valid argument that if you play a different distance and you outscore him, you're going to still win, though, then. Wouldn't you? I'm not yeah. saying it's that easy. You're playing Lee Schrainer in a singles game. It was game. interesting that Nathan, when he got the mat, he's set the distance long. Mm. No, you're right. I've noticed it myself. We might see a tactic change after this end, potentially. I've got a feeling he's just going to keep playing Lee's length. We'll see. We'll see. Someone would say, if it ain't broken, don't fix it. You know, but <laughs> maybe broken at the moment. Yeah. Nah, we'll see. We'll see. Nah, Nathan's a very good bowler. He'll know what he wants to do. Well, knowing Nathan, he's probably he's put about a game plan coming into it. Absolutely. Damien Richies, uh, Grant McLaren is playing the under-18 mixed pairs final right now. Grantos. Oh, is that uh, enough? Oh yeah, I reckon that's enough. I right. reckon lock, is that enough? 
We'll soon find out. So Lee's called it from. All right, what are we going to see with the map? Haha, -ha, Maddie. Oh. <laughs> okay, Josh. One to you. <laughs> Damo, it's only uh, it's only early, mate. They've only played two ends so far, and on the scoreboard it's saying two nil. So I, it, it's still only early days in that under 18 mixed pairs final. I heard uh, Kobe won again against Tyson. Yeah, we're talking about that with Jimmy just before. <laughs> um, I watched the last end. Some yeah. massive bragging rights going on here oh, at the yeah, this yeah. household. I had a bit of a chat to Cobes before and I said, oh, when do you start ribbing him about it? And Cobes' answer was never, because he'll probably beat me up. <laughs> I did ask the question last night that Tyson said we give him one if he uh, gives you too much lip. <laughs> He's been a very conservative big brother. Good start by Nathan too on the on the change of length. Getting one like that. Yeah, if you're going to change it, you've got to set it up. Well, we'll reply yeah. by the leg. And I can confirm the, the ladies state singles final will be the next live stream match. It will, and it will be between Tiff Brody and Belinda Coke. And so that's Sandbelt versus Geelong. I uh, marked Belinda's game uh, yesterday. She was, uh, I think, 12 down. Came back and won. Lee attacking already. Uh, I think the uh, mixed pairs is starting as well. Yes. Matty Flapper after his uh, tough game earlier. It's one of the best games I've seen this week, actually, Maddie. That that mixed pairs yeah, first round a, match. Only round of sixteen, yeah, oh, no. but it was a cracking match. And then they got to go and do it again. <laughs> Lee looking awfully close here. That's a good ball. He's got a nice bowl just sitting behind though, hasn't he? Play another one here to try and add. Is he game? I wouldn't want to get any touch on it and push the jack back. Could you could be, you could force two down? Does he come the other way? No, because there's even more chances of the jack going if you do it that way. I think if any shot, he play the old wide and just play it safe. Potentially. Interesting shot. He's very stiff not to get the result he wanted to, you know. Interesting to see whether he's one up or down still. I think he's one down.
One to lay still. No damage done. A bit risky though, wasn't it? Ah, look. He's obviously confident in his own ability, Matty. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, an exceptional player, you know. Big question, Lee Schroeder's singles ability <laughs> and, what, and what shots he plays, you know? Yeah. Well, he's mixing up the length too. Yeah, he's not definitely going nowhere near as long as he normally does. Mm. Scores now 15-8. 16-8. My apologies. 16 eight. Well, 16-8 on the scoreboard. We might double-check that one. I thought it was only 15-8. Yeah. Yeah. My scorecard's got 15-8. We'll, uh, we'll wait and see what happens in the correction. Could be that whoever's got the, the old uh, remote down there <laughs> might have accidentally hit one more too. It does happen. I was... Uh putting scores up the other day and it, the remote wasn't doing I've seen it. someone with a negative score. I'm not sure how they do, did that, but I well, did see it. I put a score in and automatically went to 43 for some reason. <laughs> Crowd uh, got to be excited. It was a good ball by Lee, just a little shift oh. to roll Nathan's over. Nate's going to want to take advantage of it though, isn't he? Oh, no. I think we've seen some forehand aggression here already. Just sort of a bit of a swing weighted shot here, maybe. Yep. It's only a little bit over. Oh, 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 Nathan will want to try and get it a little bit behind now. Oh, I just think he needs another one in the count too, you know, like... Yeah. Lee can land the ball the same way he makes three shots. Oh. Plenty of crowds around there, Josh. Yeah, no. It's been great. We've had great spectators all week. Yeah. He's a little wider. Mm, he might get the connection he here. needs. Oh. There's always chances there with that, you know, and that's why he played the shot he did. I hear those meals come out all yeah. the time, Matty, and I think I get hungrier and hungrier. Oh, uh, yep. Yep. If no one takes those steak and bronze, <laughs> I might have a crack at it myself. Not be the open silver I think. Nathan's coming down here. Oh. oh. Just a little high, unfortunately. He wasn't far away. Mm. Wonder Lee. We, Wonder let's Lee. see if we double check this score and find out what yeah. it actually is. My betting is 16 8 right now, but we'll soon find out. Yeah. Nice 
Yeah, the scoreboard now has 16-8. Marker Bobby hasn't had a chance to update it himself though, so we'll just see. Be patient. Yeah, markers do go through their routine after they get to the other end. In the underrating mixed pairs final. Yeah, three ball pairs. We've had a bit of a chat about that, haven't we? Yeah, no, we don't need to enter that into that <laughs> one again, Matty. We've had our discussion on it. I think we know where we stand. Yeah, move on. No, don't, don't definitely knock the format either. Good reply here from Nathan. Yeah, great bowl by Nathan. Uh, Barbara, you're absolutely spot on. It's, you're definitely right, Nathan. isn't playing badly at all. You know, he's played fantastic. It's just probably been the last four or five ends where Lee has been brilliant. Two great balls, yeah. one Nathan. Yep. This could be a good end for Nath. They're really zoned into the weight, haven't they? Josh? Oh, Just, they're, they're, they're not missing much at no, all. I reckon there's a chance again Lee's going to be looking to reach. I'm not going to predict a weight because I've managed not to predict that so far, but there's a chance he's going to predict it. He played a beautiful uh, metre over before. I reckon this could be similar. Oh, we got one out. He wasn't far from getting the old nah. shimmy off the bowl and getting yeah. a bit of the jack to take it back his own. <coughs> now he's got to put the pressure back on again. with the area. Is it an opportunity to take the jack back here a bit, Josh? Oh, there's no doubt there's going to be a couple of feet to a yard, at least weight, uh, the way the head's situated. And the thing is, if he sits the bowl himself, um, he's is going to get shot as well. Mm. If not two, if he hangs around. Mm. He's got an intent look about it. Is he going to get down? He's very close. He's very close. Oh, ho, 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 ho. What a ball. What a ball. Exceptional ball. It was it was there and he, you have to play it and he played it. Beautifully. Good thing about Nathan. No. He's having a smile still, you know. I mean he'd be frustrated that you know, things aren't going his way at the moment, but he's still smiling about it. Oh, oh, brilliant oh, ball, Nathan oh, Murray. Oh, Great oh, reply. Yeah. He needed that. He's been a run there for a while.
Up in that, until that stage, Lee had won one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven in the last eight ends, you know, so that was a uh, pressure bowl. What a, what a great bowl it was, too. He did do a few of those last night. I think down nearly game a couple of times and pulled out the bowl that he needed. Is that the game against Nathan Bush you're talking about? No, the one that he played Ethan. Oh, oh Nathan, sorry. Murray, you're talking about. Sorry, yeah, sorry, yeah, Nathan Murray. My apologies. Yeah. Yeah, um, he's down, I think, 23-20. Sorry, yeah, I reckon you're right. And then you got, you got a, I think, a one or and a one and then a three to go out. Yeah, so yeah. I saved it twice and then came back and, and won the game. Yeah, it was a good finish. That was a marathon match, that one too. Yeah, four hours, I, I heard. So our current score that we've got is 16-9. We will confirm that shortly. That had... Mm. Once the mixed pairs match to swing into it a bit more, we'll start giving you some scores there as well. I mean, we've got Northern, we've got Central Goulburn Murray, is it? Yeah. Versus Yarra? Yes. Northern Gateway versus Sandbell. That's it. And Central Victoria playing Geelong. <laughs> You do have good eyesight. Can't see that at all. Oh, also, plus I know he's playing that okay. cat. That might also <laughs> help as well. So you're pretending to look that way, and you know. No, no, I'm looking just to make sure. I would look to see who's on top to see be the home side. Nice holding two. It's probably the loosest end of Lazy for a while. It's been bowling so well. Same for both of them, Could be Close, second shot. Yeah. I still feel the back bowl is a shot, which is just out of our screen here on our angle. Well, Bobby's looking at it. Yeah, he's not. Is, he... is that a measure for a shot or one in a measure? I wasn't quite sure what Nathan's question was. What have been who's got second? This would definitely make oh, sure in. of it. Yeah, that's in. It's so one of the early scores from the mixed pairs is the uh, Yarra team is already leading 7-0 against CGM after three ends. Sarah Howard and uh, Dean O'Neill. Yes. I think that's enough. Looking at our camera, I think Lee's got shot. Yep. One to Lee. Should take the score to 17-9. How often have you seen Lee play Singles, Matt. I haven't. Uh, haven't seen it a lot, actually. Yeah. 
I did tune into um, when he won the Champions and Champions. The World? Yep, yep. the Worlds. I actually did play one game against him. Yep. Yeah, in a pairs game uh, in Vic Open. He was playing obviously with Brad. They do uh, team up a lot. Yeah. Did tune into Lee's uh, Zoom session, which was done during COVID, yep. about coaching, which mm -hmm. was fantastic. I haven't purchased his book yet. Holding one. Sort of getting to the stage of the match, maybe where Nathan's probably going to try and get a bit on a bit of a run, you know? Yeah. Splitting ends for a little while now will mean Lee will creep even closer and closer to the finish. Uh, as, as, as Nathan plays a brilliant bowl. Um, but it, uh, yeah, Nathan's definitely going to have to go on a run. Yeah, I feel like it's on Lee's terms at the moment. He's probably bowling well enough that if he happens to lose an end, he's going to have last ball the next end, reading yeah. himself out of trouble, you know. from Mark and Bobby Carlson from Lee's question more intent now. Yeah, there's no doubt that he's going to probably look at the bowl, look at the jack he's actually probably going to get, even get off his closest bowl under the jack or even just under and sit Nath's out <laughs> Nath's got a chance here to get a, a multiple yep Playing against Lee, you got to take those. Absolutely, yeah. To that did he? No, he didn't. Unfortunately, I think he there was a part there where he stepped to the mat because someone was walking past the head, and you know it's unfortunate. Um, but he's still got the one, and he can still try and dictate a length now and try and yeah. get on first. He's got the mat, and he gets that first bowl pressure. 17 10 now, Lee's weight. No, a small number. Put him right back in there. Oh, no, for sure. Seven shots is not light. Oh, okay. Unfortunately, lost the jack now. And Lee's moved the map back a little bit. I would say ditch to ditch, but he hasn't been playing ditch to ditch. It'd be. No, um, he's changed up to about three, three quarter. quarters. Yeah. Yep.
on the uh, under 18 mix pairs next door. Currently, <coughs> Toby Cromie six, Grant McLaren four after six ends, and that's that's if we've got the uh, we're getting the school cards up the right way. We'll just double check that. Uh, next rink has not changed since we've lost. Let's check the scores, but it's definitely 7 to 0 in the favour of Yara over CGM. Yeah, we'll Actually, the umpire's calling to check to see whether the jack is in play or not. The jack has been moved right out to the boundary peg. Northern Gateway versus Sandbell. And they played one end according to the scoreboard. Um, one nil in favour of Northern Gateway. And how's Matty going down the end? His score hasn't got registered yet. <laughs> um, actually, yet has. There's three nil in favour of Geelong. Great bowl by Lee. Yeah. Nathan will be looking at correct. His first two bowls were probably just a foot over a foot good away. Way. Really and, good uh, way. He has played some great weight here and this is definitely shot. One and a measure indicated by marker Bobby Carlson. Yeah, it'll be just one. Yeah. Nathan to be looking just to hide the jack a little bit, not give Lee a chance, yeah. I think, Matty. Yeah, just shift it over a little bit. Use his front bowl with a bit of protection. He's played another bowl, way to bowl. It's whether he's... Uh... He might, get, might get second here. Oh, not quite. Lee's option will be to draw it off, I think. I think so, just a positive draw yeah. way. You sit the bowl, turn the jack with that, he's a chance of obviously trailing to I'll his get own. jack, I'll get bowl, get shot. A few comments on the socials about how exhausted some of these bowlers are, and it has been a tough carnival, hasn't it, Josh? Yeah, it's been especially another, with the double ups. Another bowlers who've you know fi figured prominently. Oh, I think that could have done the job. I think it might have. I reckon his back bowl's nearly shot from the angle. It's probably not the camera angle. Look at that the angle I'm sitting in this chair. In. <laughs> it's a close. Could be a measure. Come the fingers. Oh, great ball, well laid. Yeah, had chances with that shot, and obviously got got the result he needed. Takes us to 
I actually think the Chromie McLaren score is around the wrong way, Maddie, because Laurent McLaren definitely scored last end, and uh, he's now gone to seven on that score. So apologies for the earlier scores, but we'll go to buy our score scoreboards and, and the cards. Cards, but uh, it's Grant McLaren is the home side on our scoreboard, and he's leading seven four after seven in the under eighteen mixed pairs final. Sometimes you just get that little wider than hand, Matty. It, it, it tends to stick a little bit. Uh, I mean, probably they're all a little bit like that, you know? Yeah, they are. I think, as we've said before, this this particular green, you really got to get your line. And Nate's got shot here. Great ball by Nathan Murray. Someone disturbing behind the head, watching him while uh, moving around while Lee was about to bowl. Some early aggression there from Lee. Yeah. Nathan Nilly needs to play a very similar bowl. Needs another one. Yeah, he's trying to hide the shot as yeah, well. Yeah, if he can take the jack back a little bit here and sit behind his his shot, that'd be ideal. On track for him, might be just a little yeah, bit under. A little bit under. Past the other one to lead, that'll count as two, I reckon. Yeah, get second. If anything, it's hidden, it, hidden his second shot away a little bit too. Tiff and uh, Belinda will be a great game next up. Yeah, right, look, I said Tiff, oh, obviously seen play for years. Um, I don't know a lot about Belinda. No, neither do I, but as I said, you know, I marked her game yesterday and um, her opponent was probably two shots away from closing the game out and Belinda came back. Nathan's got a big chance here to get a reasonable multiple. I think he's holding two. Mm. And um, interesting why Lee's going with so much weight. Yeah, there still looks to be plenty of you know space here to draw a shot. Again, no, never question Lee's shot selection because of the amount of stuff he wins. But um, it's given Nathan a good chance here to add another. Yep. And if he just puts this a fraction wider than his last, he'll he'll sit this jack. Plays the same ball, he gets in the count. You have to make those counts, especially in the situation he's in as well too. Yeah, yeah, he's not far away. Yeah, great ball, Nathan Murray. Mm. Let's set up a bit of a target now. That if that's, that's, the, that's the end. Is it? Yes. Oh. Sorry, bad call. Cool. 
We'll wait till uh, Lee comes back though for the head to be declared, but we feel like it'll be three. And while we're doing that, we'll just play a quick ad. That was our Bowling with Babies little promo out there, guys. And if anyone's interested in being involved with Bowling with Babies, yeah, well, contact Mike. myself and <laughs> Rolls Vic. I think I was having a chat earlier it. today about it. Josh, my club's going to start the program this year. So really excited about that. Yeah, no, it's a great program. What I, look, I, I love the social outcomes that are part of the program. Um, probably the program's not the intention of gaining necessarily new members. Well, she can, there's no doubt yeah. about that. But the providing... Um, some mums who have recently had a, their, a newborn, the chance to get out and be active and social again. Um, yeah, so it's fantastic, you know. And uh, Since I've joined Bowl Victoria uh, in September, I've seen a couple of programs run and they've been fantastic based on that result yeah. alone, you know. And I've seen one club that run a one-off day with it, um, not only obviously going to run a four or five-week program starting a few weeks' time, but um, the mothers group are going to have their AGM at their club and three of those mums join up their Monday night Cracker Jack Bowls, you know, so there's some great outcomes for clubs if they actually get involved with a program like that. And it's, it's about clubs being inclusive in the community, so it's, you know, tapping into potential, as you said, they might not be bowlers, but, you know, good chance they could be. Um, but getting more people into your club. I think there's an extended break here, I'm not sure what's going on but um, we're waiting that's all good we can keep t talking about bowling babies Matty if we want to do you know after that great primary <laughs> age you know so um, well we've we got a primary school right next to us at our, our club and um, we'll be looking to tap it into those parents you know especially after drop off with their kids and get them into the club and you know have more people in our club and you never know could get bowlers could get just members out of it and it could be too, though. Um, you know, you think about a mama comes down and has a great time, a part of the bowling of babies program. They might have a family Christmas party at the club. You know, it's a barefoot bowls party. They might tell their workers. Yeah, it's uh, about it's when a they go back to work. But they might, you know. So there's, there's the added extras that way that your club can benefit from running a program like that, or any other sort of de you know designated participation program that you can run. You know, so yeah, yeah. And I think the smart clubs that's what they're looking at, getting more people in. What was it? So was it three? <laughs> oh, well. <coughs> that brings Nathan right back into the game here, yeah, Josh. Yeah, another end here by Nathan will be a... Um, Game on again. Yeah, this is where Nace got to... Got to jump on it. He can jump yeah. with his first. Jump on it. <laughs> on rink four, we have the team from CGM playing the team from Yarra in the open mix pairs. And that score currently is in favour 8-2 to the Yarra team. Rink five, we have Northern Gateway versus Sandbelt, and after two ends, um, it's one all. I think there might have been multiple dead ends so far. I've just seen one being played there. Matty Curter, the skipper for Sandbelt. Um, and over on rink seven, our last mixed pairs match currently being played is between Central Victoria and Geelong. And I need to have a bit of a look. So rink seven Four, is it? one. Which after Away two team. Geelong, I think. In favour of Geelong. A couple cracking bowls there. It's a great bowl here. Lee's <laughs> oh. regrouped after the little intermission. Yeah, a little bit of a break, and I think 
Nath really let himself down with that first bowl. Josh? Oh, no. And he was I angry mean, about it. Yeah, and he look, I get you. He'd be disappointed, on. but, um, you know, you still got a couple of bowls. You, you, you probably can't dwell on the ones you, you, you miss. Yeah, everyone misses. Wait, he needs just. Yeah, I think this is good enough for him. He's going to get to his own and just. What a bowl. Don't know whether that changes it from two to th three. No, I think it might be still be two. Two come out. We'll be measuring. As uh, Nathan picks up the three last in, Lee replies shot away, and yeah. uh, what's what Nate, Lee needed to do, you know? It's what you got to do. Yeah. <coughs> Maybe a three. Waiting for the paddles. Two. Only two. Twenty to thirteen in Lee's favour. He's nearly at that point where you can go out. Matter, you know, as soon as you get to 21, you're always a sneaky chance of going out, you know, so. Often finding singles, this has become the hardest shots, Josh. Yeah. Again, Lee obviously doesn't have any troubles with it. The no. amount of singles titles he's won, <laughs> so it's probably bread and butter for him. Yeah. Maybe the newer bowlers would. Even some experienced ones still struggle sometimes. <laughs> Great to have the juniors on the green. Yeah, I reckon they'd be tough playing alongside some of the, uh, the legends that are currently <laughs> playing on this green right now too. And some of them don't look like they're out of out of place at all. Uh, not the way they've been playing. Great correction from Lee there. Yeah, really good reply back. No, some of the games I haven't had as much chance as I'd like to watch some of the junior games, Matty, but some. A lot of them. <laughs> I don't lack any uh, fear in playing any of the shots either. No, they're quite happy to pull out the drive. Even pulling some funky hairstyles too, Matty. Yeah, I'm not sure about that one. Maybe he's inspired by Nath a little bit. I did talk to his dad. 
Yeah. Asked him, was he impressed with it? No, as a dad says, no. About anyway, what can he do? <laughs> Uh, but he said he, he's emulating a couple of NBA basketballers, you know. So he's obviously a big sports fan, Kobe. He's, that's who we're talking about, at least at this stage. Yeah. Great ball by Nathan Murray. <laughs> he may have made two there, too. That screen's been... Oh, it's a great ball. He loves his sport. I was chatting to Dad as well. Very close oh. ball here by Lee. Great ball. Could be an opportunity to get two here, Josh. If he plays a he needs bit it. He needs it with this in, way the score is. Ball. Two keeps him within. His bowl did flop then, so he's given Nathan less room to make a two. Yeah. Nathan, not happy with this one? No. One to him, though. He gets a chance. Yep. Gets the mat. first ball. First one's important for him to get a couple ends in a row. Yeah. I reckon he lost that other end this way because his first ball was off. Not happy with it? No. It gives Lee an opportunity to pounce. Yep. And Lee's played this side pretty well, hasn't he? He has, and uh, so it's not a side that naturally most people go to no. on this rink, but um, he has played it well. I think the one thing he does is make sure he doesn't get too wide, you know, he, he, play, he errs on the side of caution. Yeah. Another good bowl here by yeah, Nathan. He's gonna have another one in there. He's moving. Yes. Maybe. Yeah, the bowl's flying everywhere. Um, unfortunately for Lee, he got Nathan's closest, but he also peeled his own out too. Mm.
I know that feeling. Room here for Lee, he'll probably go back to the draw and try and uh, draw a shot. He goes to it when he needs it. Just a little bit <coughs> through. And Wanda Nathan still yeah, wants to think. Yeah, I think Wanda Nathan. First time he's won multiple ends in a while. He just would have probably rather a number versus a single digit. Yeah, he had a real chance to get two or three then, I thought. 20 to 15 now. Yep, caught an end, really. And it starts to build the pressure, Josh, doesn't it? Well, it just might, might make Lee think about it. I mean, as I said, she's still in the prime position at this stage, you know. Um, but um, definitely, because momentum can be a big thing in this sport. Yeah, and we saw that in uh, Tiff and Triss's game, especially momentum changes. Nathan would still love to get that first ball oh, in he's there not, and set not, the pressure he's on. He's getting it, is yeah. he? Oh, he's always on track, but he's just lacking that probably metre on. And you know, Lee's weights. <laughs> Pretty much spot on. Cracking first ball here by Lee. Yeah. If that was a good ball. Nathan, not far again. He's just that just little bit narrow. Is he yeah. going to hang? No. Nah. Oh. Lee's change hand, he's probably seen yeah, the two bowls of Nathan's, he's probably thinking, oh, if I just land them, I'm half a sniff of hanging around for two. Oh, he's done it. Or just draw oh, around oh, on oh, oh. own. Oh, oh. I wasn't quite sure whether he was going to stay in the backhand, and then I couldn't really read it out of his hand whether he changed, and he change was perfect, wasn't it? Drive here, Maddie. Yeah. Yeah. Great hit. Did it get out though? Don't know. Oh. Yeah. Way Massive. out. Way, way out. out. Way out. We couldn't see it. <laughs> 
Good hit by Nathan Murray. Yeah. Left into replay from the same end. Josh? Yeah, they've done that a couple of times with a couple of dead ends this game. School updates across the rinks, guys. Uh, on the rink next door in the under 18 mixed pairs final, Grant McLaren and Sophie Kozman are currently leading 11 6 on 11 ends against Kobe Cromie and Alana Flapper. On the next rink, we have the mixed pairs uh, match between Central Gobble Murray and Yarra, and Yarra is currently leading 14 2 after 7 ends. Next rink we have Northern Gateway playing Sandbelt. And that one on the scoreboard saying one all after two, so I'm not sure it's exactly what's going while, on. Uh, and the same with the, the game down in the far rink, number seven, it's saying four one after three in favour of the Geelong team over the Central Victoria team. It doesn't change for a while either. No, I don't think they're using their uh, their remotes, Josh. Pretty slack on those rinks, boys <laughs> and girls. Lift your act. Lee just takes it back to his... Uh... Just a Lee's reply bit. is not bad. <laughs> yeah. There. It was unlucky. Sort of half the jack and giving yeah. Lee shot now. Giving it to Lee. Pretty well pointed bowl, Josh. Just a little shy, oh, yeah. Maddie. As long as you allow the ask the marker, Josh, you're allowed to go up and have a look. Yeah, we talked about this in one of the streams <laughs> the other day. I said there's a rule that says you can not allow the third bowl, but pretty much the unwritten rule is as long as you ask the marker politely, you're allowed to go up and have a look, you know. So, uh, yeah. Look, I don't say it's a big deal. It doesn't happen that often enough that it's considered time wasting, I don't think. If it was happened excessively, I think the marker and or the umpire might have something to say about it. Yeah. Particularly the umpire. Um, but yeah, there's always been that rule if you ask the marker. You know, I actually did it myself when I there a couple of days ago. Yeah. Make the most of that little... Uh... You're right. I think if you're not abusing it and it's only <coughs> crucial times, the you head, want to go the head and have a look. looking iffy. I didn't know what was going on. And so... Do you um, follow your third bowl down a lot? Pretty much 100% of the time. <laughs> Every time. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Well, there's times when I have followed it down, not really intending, and then got down there and gone, oh, so glad I did. I look in, even if it's a bad bowl, which you don't ever want to do, but um, it's just a, so I can look at the head pretty much more than, oh, Nathan, yeah. bit of Jack, and we've got oh, another dead end. Again. We do. Dead end again. Another marathon match. Are we going to replay from the same <laughs> end again? And uh, guess what? We're going back down the other end again. Yeah. And I reckon this mat's coming up a little bit too. Mm. 
<laughs> I think Lee predicted where it was going to go. <laughs> He's bringing it up the mat, giving him a hand. Here you go, mate. This is where you want it. This is where you are, uh, mate. Well, we're going right on uh, two metres back from the minimum. Take three of this end. <laughs> Replay, let's go again. Yeah, this is what he's after. Yeah. He's been, yes. Great ball. We had another early attack, but this has worked out very well for Lee. Great bowl. Nath is a toucher. Has that got in the ditch as well? I reckon Nathan's one of went out of bounds. Yeah. Don't quote me on this. Could be too. Lee's is very close. We're going to have trouble bringing you some <laughs> vision potential <laughs> this end the way it is already. I think Lee's is still alive. Um, sorry, Nath is still alive. Johnny Stokes says, great draw shot, nearly resting touch. It's something you would normally do, Stokesy. <laughs> Drive with your first bowl. I've seen you do that plenty of times. Oh, this is Not a bad reply by Nathan. So we've got the bowl and the jack pretty close in the ditch together. Yeah, you can see the two markers on the edge of the ditch. I mean... So I'm not sure the camera vision we're going to pick up here, guys, but um, it, um, the, the shot bowl in the ditch is probably a foot away from the jack. Yeah. And Nathan's drawn, well, it's hard to say from oh, this angle. Lee's, but Lee's got great weight on this too. Lee's nearly drawn inside Nathan's. Yeah, he's made two already. He's actually definitely made his second shot, I would have thought. to the rule about not coming down. Probably was brought in to keep the game flowing. Oh, Josh. definitely. We don't want time wasting. No. Yeah, as I said, that's why the, it's written in the conditions of play, but also where the you know the gentleman or the, you know, the, the sportsmanship rule allows it to happen in, in certain circumstances. No one just wants to see it abused. I still think it's capable of drawing the shot on the edge. Obviously, <laughs> weight is critical. Well, if Nath, what's Nath done with this? Is it worth? Is it worth trying to remove Nath's ball? No, I don't think so. Because Nath's last ball beats Lee's other ball t too. So. Yeah, he's saying two. Nath's saying two. Really? Yep. So then definitely Lee doesn't have to play that sort of bowl.
Can he stay up? Can he stay up? Oh. Oh. It doesn't look too happy there, Josh. No, I think just the last bowl of, of Lee's fell in, it only just fell in, and it might have touched the jack, you know, and um, it's one of those hard ones. But I think the thing was that Nathan thought it was two anyway, but um, I think he, he may be wondering why Bobby never maybe caught it before it landed on the jack. It's one of those hard ones, you know. Um, maybe it was maybe just a wrong call by... Maybe it was two. As I said, Nathan, I, I know Nathan, the way he was acting, he thought it was two anyway, but he probably never got the opportunity to have a look. Yeah. Well, it's now 22.15. Well, finally, the full end. Yeah, we finished it then. <laughs> We've been playing that one for 15 minutes, I reckon. <laughs> And now he's within that reach. Three to secure another yep. state singles final. He's um. How many's uh? Oh, look. <laughs> I have seen his record, and don't quote me, but he's won multiple state singles and champion champions, so... Mm -hmm. Started there by Nathan. Definitely that time of the match where, and as I said, Nathan has to string a few ends together now. Just got to clear Lee's last bowl. Ooh, we had the way to make two. Oh, great oh, yeah. ball by Lee. He's turned his over for shot. Nice attacking already. That actually oh, nice. didn't work out good at all for him, unfortunately. No. <laughs> <He's gotta be. laughs> Again, he's uh, playing in good spirits. He, he knows he's that one didn't go good face. for him, and he's had a smile. He gave himself a clap and going, shivers.
It's at least currently holding three, and that's that's it's, match. It's, that's it's all game. he needs at this stage. I mean, both him and Nathan got another bowl each, but. Um, There is room though, like if he's... I'm going to make a prediction here, Josh. Yeah, okay, Matty. From what I've seen from Nath this week, yeah. I reckon he's going to get shot with this last ball. Good, good call. Good call. He's played some really important balls this week. Otherwise, it's uh, game over. Still on his speed now, he doesn't want to travel too far through. Two or three, Matty? I think it's only two. Yeah, the mat's been picked up, yeah. looks like it's only two. Two. Takes lead to 24, 15. Last end, or will we see a few more? Because Nathan's got to get on a real rally now. Yeah, I know, but he's 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 had a good week, Nathan. Oh, he's been fantastic. And and last night he was he was down game a couple of times. Does make it pretty hard when Lee yeah. does that with his first ball. <laughs> <laughs> Good way to start off potentially uh, last end. He's unfortunately with his first bowl, whilst an amazing bowl, it actually fell backwards. If he fell or stage upright, he would have been that resting touch up. Yeah. He's going to give it a chance. He's at that stage of the match where what do you got to lose? Mm. <coughs> no. It's drawing again. Oh, I think that's overdraw, Matty. I think you're right, Josh. Mm, he's the other Just side of it. Ooh. Mm. To make the second shot for sure? Yeah, I think so. Well, Nate's gonna go again with that same one, I think. I think so. It's actually probably bigger this time. Yeah. That's a good weight though. Is he gonna get down? Got Is he gonna get down? Oh! oh. Close, Josh. <laughs> Lee's probably trying to cover those oh, balls now. Gonna have to, isn't he? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I love the smile on Nate's face. Great game between yeah, uh, Lee Schrader and Nathan Murray. Played in great spirits. Great turn of the game. 
score probably didn't indicate the actual standard of both players, you know, in terms of the fact that there's, I think so. there's 10 difference, but um, congratulations, Lee Schreiner. Another state singles title to him. Yeah, he, congratulations. Bowled, he was amazing, wasn't he? And congratulations to uh, Nathan Murray, yeah. great runners up. He, so. He's had a fantastic tournament. He's bowled really well, and you're right, as, I, as you said, the score doesn't reflect how well he played. Yeah. So, um,. We will leave you guys to it. We will have another short break and we will have come back again very shortly for the ladies singles final between Tiffany Brody and Belinda Coke. And that'll be coming up shortly.